Hello, and welcome in all in greetings and all that jazz to episode number 10 of the Psych War Podcast. It's me, your lovely host, David Dawson, and I'm here to bring to you the 10th episode and the power that it will send through your veins. Now, it's, I think it's been about a little over a month since I last recorded an episode, honestly, no excuses. I've been writing down a lot and doing a lot of research because I want to get like longer episodes by myself because life kind of keeps a lot of people from doing a lot of things and that's participating in the show. That's even myself and that's why we haven't had an episode in over a month because, you know, in this world that we live in, you can't stop working, you can't stop trying to move towards a bigger future, but I like to start by letting, I'm going to recommend some books I read. I'm currently reading, uh, it's by Nicholas A. Christophus. It's called Blueprint, The Evolutionary Origins of a Good Society. And th- this is a really, it's a really good book. And I first thought to read it when I saw the, him, uh, Nicholas Christoph- Christophus, Christophus. Oh my God, I'm butcher's name. Christakis. When I saw him on the Joe Rogan show and he mentioned it and I heard him talk. And a friend of mine got the book and I asked him, could I borrow it? And I'm about, I'm, I'm, a, I'm about a third of the way through it. Not even a third. Well, yeah, a third. And it's, it's a pretty interesting book because it's, to, it, I guess not suggest, but he studied different accounts throughout human history and different what he likes to call universals that all humans seem to share. And when he says universals, he means universals in the sense of no matter where you went, all across the globe, different countries, different cultures, there are things that we all shared. One common thing is that when people are on their dying deathbed, they all want the same thing. They all want to be loved by someone they all want to see what they loved before they died feel the warmth i guess you so you could say but that's not always the case and a lot of the times when it comes to these universes that he suggests they they mainly they attribute to human empathy human rage our lack not lack of our possession of compassion and empathy and morals but also our lack thereof there are things that you will find all around the world no matter where you go you will find good people and you will find bad people you will find loving families and loving cultures and you will find demonizing and traumatizing cultures and families because humans as a universal we differ now the other book i'd like to tell you about i've only read a few parts of it because I don't own the book yet. I, I've mainly just been reading parts of the ebook, and I don't want to like read the entire ebook because I prefer paperback. And it's uh, The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker. I'm not going to go into it much, but it he basically goes into the explanation of fear, and you can you in it you'll see how he even lists how someone can be predatory in their nature and how they can prey upon weaker individuals or more not strong-willed individuals so those are the two books i like to, i like to recommend to you the evolutionary origins of a good society by uh Chris, nicholas a christakis and the gift of fear by gavin de becker now i want to go ahead and flip over flip the script a little bit segue 2020 is not that far away guys what it's the 13th today so couple about a little under three months and we'll be in 2020 now if i recall i'm pretty sure they said skynet destroyed the world in 2020 (laughs) but no but seriously there's a lot of things that humans have predicted and there are a lot of things scheduled to launch and be released in 2020 and it's a it's a coming storm it's a whole new revolution of things like we're they, they're prototyping so many things now that people would never imagine where it's like the massive devices that they're actually using to clean the ocean th- different gaming systems if that's your if that's your jazz different phones drivable cars the industry is changing 
automation is taking over. But when automation takes over, it doesn't mean people just lose jobs. New jobs get opened up because of that automation. Hell, we got a new election coming up, and that's gonna be a it's gonna be a hell of a election. There's there's a lot of promising con- candidates in my opinion. A few that I could recommend that seem like they at least had a level perspective on what they want to do would be Tulsi Hubbard, Dan Crenshaw, Andrew Yang. But I'm not I'm not a hundred percent educated on just the semantics of exactly what he wants to do. Obviously, Bernie Sanders, because I believe Bernie Sanders is a man of the people. Because if you look back, Bernie Sanders has been marching with marginalized people for their rights since the 60s, since Martin Luther King, since Rosa Parks, Bernie Sanders was there and he was a voice for marginalized people as a white man. But I'm not plugging him. I'm just saying that's my reason to like him. And even then, I'm not just going to give him my vote. I'm actually still going to like do research and choose the best candidate to get what I feel is the best outcome. Now, with the with the storm that 2020 is, we got to look at 2019. In 2019, we all kind of see that there's kind of a little unrest, in my opinion, because it's starting to explode in our like general media and pop culture. As someone that's... I've always watched a lot of television. I've read a lot of books read a lot of articles, read, watched documentaries, looked into conspiracy theories because due to circumstances of my childhood, I always wanted to know why things happened the way they did. I wanted to know exactly what was behind what and why it happened so I could understand it, prevent it, or understand it and do it myself. Now, I like to look in between the lines of television and if you look back during like the Malcolm in the Middle era, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you know the what's that '90s '80s sitcom era, might be even before that. Uh, I'm young, but <clears throat> when you look back before that, there was kind of a there was that feeling of unrest. Like Malcolm in the Middle, they were a below below middle class family struggling to make ends meet. Now, they were poor and 100%. Like, they were 100% just blue collar. Is it blue collar? Is blue collar the. I think, yeah, blue collar is poor people. Not not poor people. Let me stop. Unionized people, I guess. Unionized workers. The non people with not, like, massive amounts of capital. But there's shows like that. Um, what's another example? Family Matters. Full House. It was all kind of like a. It was just a different vibe. The vibe I'd say it had was that they were, the family core was still mainly oriented. And if not oriented, media was still not focused on like stoking flames per se. Like there were some out there, but it wasn't like a driving force. But today, we, if you haven't seen Joker, I recommend seeing it. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I would say, as many reviews have said, Joker does paint a very, very accurate depiction of living life with a mental illness, like a serious mental illness, because if you just watch the, if you watch the previews, this isn't a spoiler, that man took L's his entire life, and I for one can tell you, when you take L's your entire life, eventually you start to, you do one of two things. You think it happened to me, so why shouldn't it happen to others? Or you think it happened to me, so I don't want it to happen to others. And I believe the latter one, which is not inflicting that upon other people, ends the perpetuation of the cycles that cause it on you. And it's, it's, it's bonkers, bro. Like, it's just, it's just a loop. That's all it is. It's just a full loop, guys. And we all know it. We all do it. We all see it. We all live it every day. But... What happens when you get sick of being on that loop? What happens when you're, you know, a hamster? Like, you're literally just being a hamster. You're just constantly running on a loop and running on a wheel. And it's, the movie represented a lot. Classism, treatment of the mentally ill, treatment of people that are just odd and weird. But... That's not, that's not, that's not a foreign thing. 
like humans tend to have that tribe mentality that if you don't look like the norm and act like the norm or something close to it, that they'll push you away and treat you differently, if not even out of purpose, out of just, I don't, I don't even know, maybe social engineering, maybe ingenuity, I don't know. Then, even from Joker, let's go to another superhero piece of media. The Boys, the Amazon TV show. In The Boys, it literally, like in my opinion, just shows an accurate depiction of what superheroes would be like in real life. They would be corporate-owned, lobbyist-backed, super war machines. They'd be brand names, they'd be video games, they'd be capital income. That's all they would be. They would be just like celebrities, but gods. Because real life is in the fairy tale. The only thing that really makes Superman so different is apparently that he came from a different planet and was raised gently, and that's why he can deal with his nature. But I'm sorry, Superman almost better works as a, he almost works better as a villain. It makes more sense. Gives people something to climb towards. <laughs> but even like another flip, go from the boys, go to South Park. Bro, South Park literally had an entire episode dedicated to Chinese censoring. Like, it was actually hilarious. R.I.P. Winnie the Pooh. Watch the episode. <laughs> but an entire episode dedicated to Chinese censoring. Let me put that in perspective. Like, an entire 30-ish minute episode dedicated to, like, them memeing and joking about how in real life China is currently doing that. I think that's a thing with Blizzard right now. I'm not too up to date on that from what I've seen, and it's very little. I think either Blizzard started boycotting some type of Chinese thing and it affected their players so now a lot of different major Blizzard players or people, just major gaming influencers, are dropping Blizzard in their product and software. That's as far as I can tell. But on top of that, flip over from South Park because it's always talked about like PC culture and gentrification. Flip from that, and we got where I'm at. I mean, there's been an incredible rise in podcasting. And you want to know why? Because in most other forms of media that take incredible amounts of money to get your voice out there, the promotion, the label, everything they want you to be is too constricting for a lot of different people. That's why you see so many people, celebrities, non-celebrities, rich, poor, everyone makes podcasts because it is a way to get your voice out there. And I strongly urge you that if you have a voice and you really love to get it out there to start your own podcast or even asked to come on because if there's something you feel like you want to talk about and get out there to the world we can talk about it and get it out there to the world but the rise of it shows that like in radio it's done you know no one most people are abandoning radio for podcasting most people are abandoning radio for streaming most people are abandoning cable for streaming but the thing with that is what are the are the streaming companies gonna be good about it like are they gonna keep their prices fair or are they gonna do what normal capitalist american corporations do and that's increase their prices because the demand is already high enough now it's just that's what i mean by the coming storm like there's literally like uber freight like there's uber shipping now like, Uber can ship. Now, I'm not sure if that means they all have privately contracted shippers or free agents that just happen to own trucks and have certifications. But that will be incredibly wild. Tesla's made shipping con- shipping trucks that are energy efficient. Elon Musk installed a, like, I don't know how expensive, like, water system in Flint and is aiding those people. Like, the world is really just crazy. Like, right now, even, there's literally private rocket rocket companies outside of just Elon Musk. I think there's a Chinese one. There's a Chinese one, there's Elon Musk himself, and there's, like, two other ones. And they're literally, like, privateering space. Like, 
when it's done, they, they're going to be the people to hit space outside of government jurisdiction. It, it, it It's amazing, guys. And then on top of that, like, the recent news on Sesame Street. Sesame Street's, like, done an episode that literally has to teach children about the opioid crisis. And it's amazing. I, I almost find it kind of ironic, but, like, America's really worried about the opioid crisis. But they weren't worried about the crack epidemic or mass incarceration. Or, you know, Operation Northwoods. Or, you know, the Bay of Pigs. Or, you know, anything. It's almost like, once again, it's whatever's stuck in popular media. And what's stuck in trendy culture is what people seem to follow and always be around because that's what the majority are doing but advancements in human civilization didn't come from the majority it came from gifted individuals who put time and work in because they love something and everyone can be a gifted individual in their own right but I guess everyone has not shown that and a lot of times it's hard because a lot of times you've been through a lot of ridicule and I fully understand that as someone, I used to be 250-ish pounds. I think I was 255 at my max weight, 260. And about two years ago, in 20, November of 2018, when I came back from my stay in California and moved back to Mississippi, I decided then and there that I would lose weight I would be a healthier and better me, and I would prove wrong the people that told me that I could not do exactly that. And almost two years later, I've done it. I'm kind of at equal footing with a lot of people in life now that, you know, it's just (laughs) work, bills, expenses, car problems, but I'm a lot better than I used to be. And I like to think that I tried to take control of my life because at one point I tried to take my life. And I understand. Like, oh yeah, I, I, I was 260. I'm, I believe, 165. I'm between 165 and 170 right now. My bathroom scale is like five pounds off. But I'm in the mid 60s to upper 70 range, 170 range. And I feel great. I will say that in terms of my major depression, I haven't had a major depressive episode. I get sad like everyone does, but I function way better with picking myself up now. But the hardest thing with weight loss was just the fucking battle of it. Like, it's never easy. No matter what you do, it's never easy for people, man. Like, I'm losing weight, and I would actively be, you know, eating different meals. And my own family would just be like, oh, you're not eating? You must be trying to lose weight. Oh, no, I just, I actually wasn't hungry this time, but yeah, I guess I just got to eat because I'm fat. Or I, you could be eating a salad, bro, and someone will walk up and just be like, yo, look at this fat ass dude eating a salad, trying to lose some weight. Or if you're eating a burger, they're just going to walk by and either think or say, oh, look at me, he's eating a burger, that's why he's fat. Don't end up like him. Well, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what this person's doing. You don't know what they've done. Even when I was bigger, I was still more physically in shape than half the kids in our ROTC program when I was in high school. Like, I could outdo kids that were 100 pounds lighter than me because they were damn near malnutrition and probably drank fucking Mountain Dew and ate Doritos all day. And even though I was bigger, I still worked out. But it's just an image. It's an image that's painted by our culture. It's an image that's painted by society. And I'll... It might be an image painted by nature, to be 100% honest, because realistically, the only people throughout history that have been able to get fat were the people that secured large large stores of food or large stores of capital slash currency, and that was mainly kings, and everyone knows the experience with kings. We don't like that shit. 
they greedy, they get fat, they get inbred, they get delirious, and they cause basically the fucking dark ages. But throughout the world, constantly and consistently. Now, it's... Uh, when you stop to think about it, it all seems like madness, to be honest. And a lot of the times, people stop and think, well, what am I supposed to do about it? Like, what am I supposed to do about the government wanting to fake an entire terrorist attack on its own nation? What am I supposed to do about the government potentially instigating war all across the Middle East? What am I supposed to do about that? Well, you know, buddy, I guess nothing. Until the problem shows up on your doorstep, and then you're going to be asking everyone, what can we do about it? The point of being aware and talking about it and educating the populace is that once it is done, it's intended to make the populace smarter. However, we have a common issue in America, and that's lack of education, especially compared to some other nations. Now, I'm not comparing ourselves to third world countries either, because third world countries was the original term used for countries that didn't fall under. I think like either the, the world war powers like NATO, et cetera, not NATO. Well, maybe NATO. Yeah. NATO or the, uh, the fucking what USSR, I think. God, I need to brush up on my fucking terminology. But third world countries like Nicaragua, Harden, Honduras, Mexico itself. Like, bro, y'all know there's constant, you can literally go find constant declassified documents of all the meddling in their government that we did. Like, consistently and constantly. I'm pretty sure we destabilized the country over bananas, bro. And we constantly export tons of their natural resources and send people there for, like, tourism. But the people there are actually living in squalor and to the point to where they're fleeing their own homes and countries to come to America because it's a better opportunity. And then Americans think that their countries are just bad because, oh, they just didn't do as good as America did. No, bro, you're not gifted. You're not special. Like, Americans have a really large sense of entitlement and it, it shines in all of us. It shines in me sometimes, but I try to, I try to at least show respect for other cultures, show awareness for other cultures, keep consideration over not only just my own, like, peace of mind, but also humans' peace of mind. I guess that's from a study point. Because at my current level, obviously, I'm not doing anything to affect all of humanity. But, hey, yo, I mean, this podcast is going to get out to all of humanity, so... Right. Yeah. <laughs> but throughout... Throughout history, constantly, we see that the issues that arise in nations that cause their fall are typically built up of over, they spread themselves too thin, they war too hard, their trusted, irreputable leader just dies and they have no one to lead, so the power structure crumbles, their infrastructure crumbles, their connection to water crumbles. If you look at all like great civilizations, they harnessed rivers, they harnessed water. They lived on the water. Like, that's what humans need to thrive. And then I think about places like California where I literally saw man-made lakes where, the lakes where they had to pump water into. And I'm just like, why are people living here? But I guess there was gold in them their hills at one point. Now there's just plastic surgery. And gentrification. And then like 60,000 homeless people in L.A. Like, Jesus. But history history is weird, guys. It has a really big perspective. Like, you think back to 1613 or 16, like 1613, the 1600s in America. Like, what what period in America was that? I can't think of it off the top of my head. So what we're going to do is... We're gonna, we're gonna look up what period in America was the 1600s.
Hope everybody's having a great day as they're listening to this. I really appreciate your listening. It means a lot. Okay, 1600s were a time of big changes in America. It spurred on a couple groups of people who are seeking a better life in a new land. The two main groups of English settlers colonized America in the 1600s. The second of the colonists, the Jamestown, landed off the coast of Virginia in 1607. Oh, wow, yeah, that was the that was the first people that got there. So, yeah, around that time, there was literally a samurai named Hazekura, Haz, Hazekura I think it was Hazekura Sunakaga, or Sunakashi, or Sunakagi. Like, there was literally a samurai that journeyed by way of Mexico to Rome. That just puts history in perspective. Like, there were, there were, there were still samurais in the 1600s. I think I have other history facts that could put things into perspective, but I'm going to flip the script and talk about some more, like, brain things. I'm going to segue to the brain. Segway, segue. If anybody ever heard of the term neuroplasticity, like, it's basically, a, it's kind of a concept. Like, if you're a negative person, your brain will change and alter to accommodate and become like your neurological structure and you will literally change yourself like if you are a negative person and you constantly stew in your negative emotions it will literally change how you process look and think about life it will mess with your dopamine and serotonin receptors this is where well, i'm not gonna say this is where depression comes from but i think this is similar to depression if not depression and sometimes as someone that has had severe depression even though I hate when people stood in my face and was like, come on, man, just, you know, cheer up, look on the bright side. That's shit advice, but I'm not going to lie. Sometimes that's good advice, bro. Like, sometimes you do just have to look on the bright side. Sometimes that L is not the worst thing and not the worst part of your day. Like, that L is just a little chuckle along the bump because if you had taken that L when you were a, a younger, a weaker, less confident, less whatever, you love about yourself you guess what would have happened you'd have completely melted down and fried out but now you can look at yourself and think like oh that's nothing (laughs) that can't stop me that's the point that's the point of looking on the bright side don't get me wrong it's not always easy because for one i know that sometimes it feels like life doesn't just throw you a curveball it feels like life just like walks off a home plate and like beats your ass with a catcher's mitt but sometimes guys it's Sometimes, sometimes it's hard. It really is. And I know, and I fully acknowledge that. Especially in the world we live in today with so much technology taking over. Technology's taking over. It's revolutionizing the way we think, the way we act, the way we do day-to-day activities. And there are some people that I'd say that I'm included in that were like raised by a set of rules and traditional standards that's just not from this era. And now we're here. But uh, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to wake up in the morning I try not to check my phone anymore when I wake up in the morning. Like, I'll click it to look at the time. But other than that, I'll keep it on the charger. I won't check any notifications. I'll go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, try and do, like, something that I see that might need to be done or maybe make a cup of coffee. I rarely eat breakfast in the morning. I need to work on that. But sometimes I'll eat breakfast. But I try not to check my phone or just general technology to give myself a chance to, like, I guess adjust because there are a lot of things and easier, but sometimes you don't need it. Like picking up your phone. Wait, what the fuck just Nani? Oh. Sorry about that guys. I was having like a that was really weird. Wow, I might have to, I might have to edit that out. That was really weird. 
basically it seemed like I stopped recording for a second and it just wasn't picking up anything. So I'm going to go back and listen to that during the editing. And if it does or does not, I'll see what I can do. But yeah, guys, life's hard. Hard and it sucks. But sometimes we just got to persevere and push through it because that's what we're going to get at the end. That's when we know that we've done good. When you get to the end of the road of that inspiration, when you have that aha moment, when you don't get rejected, when you get the girl, when you win the fight, when you beat the boss, when you get the new job, when you get the raise, when you get paid, the things that you feel good about. When you see your significant other smile, when you see your parents loving each other, when you see your pet happy, when you see your kid make good grades, when you see a kid ask you the same stupid fucking question five times in a row, but you know you still love them because that's just how they are. We live in a world that's not good, guys. Like, even if we weren't mean to each other, like, fucked up shit would still happen. People would still get killed by animals and random acts of nature. We can't just continue to just be mean to each other because we're different. It won't get us anywhere. All it does is create <laughs> jokers, and that's a... D- <laughs> if you watch the Mexican Joker episode of South Park. Because <laughs> apparently at the border, we're making a Mexican Joker scenario from the actual, like, 2019 Joker movie, but with Mexican kids. <laughs> South Park is brilliant, but, ah, oh man, it's hard, guys, it's hard out here, and I want everyone to know that there are people out here that are here for you, there are people out here that care about you, and you are also here to care for yourself, you don't need to be hard on yourself at every occasion, you don't need to be hard on yourself at every moment you have, sometimes it's good to just accept it, yeah, man, I'm I'm doing this, and I don't have to feel bad about it. So often, sometimes, I feel bad that sometimes I'm slacking. Like, I'll play the game for, like, an hour, because I don't really even commit that much time to gaming. Now, I watch a lot of YouTube videos just to gain information, really. But when I do game, I might game for an hour or two. But at some point during it, I kind of remember, like, when I was a kid, my parents would just walk in my room, and, what are you doing on that game? You spend your whole life on it. You ain't doing nothing. And I just think to myself, is that what I'm doing now? But I think about it like, my nigga, I, I, I work. I save my money. I make adult decisions. I put gas in my own car. <clears throat> I don't even know what I'm saying. But... Most of all, guys, at the end of the day, just hug your loved ones and tune in to the next episode of the Psych War Podcast. We'll be back at you with episode 11, nice and soon.